Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Well, we have two gentlemen here. Um, this is uh, behavioral dynamics, two people on such an amazing day. But uh, hey, that's good. Um, this is Frank Clutisay Trading, um, October 30th, 2018. Halloween, T minus one. In a day, it's going to be Halloween. And then we start the month of November, the run to the end of 2018, one heck of a year. It's approximately 8.43 p.m. Eastern Standard Time here on the New York, New Jersey waterfront. Beautiful evening. Last that I took my dogs out on the uh, right on the water across from our house. Full uh, disclosure, this is purely for financial education, not for any solicitation or advice. Session will be recorded, uploaded to the Google YouTube channel. So let's say trading. You can find some nuggets of wisdom on the reality of what markets are doing. And um, feel free to pass the word around. In the meantime, I just want to make sure that you two gentlemen have full visual and audio connection. Yes? Yes, sir. Okay. That's great. Because I just got an error message from GoToMeeting saying I might be experiencing degraded audio quality in your recording. Um, so that's the reason why I asked. On that note, um, I do apologize to everyone for the truncated video from Sunday night, Sunday evening, which I believe the last 45 minutes to an hour was for a technical reason. No fault of mine, blame the algos, were truncated. There's a lot of good stuff that I showed on that hour, but um, try to cover some of the things tonight. All right, so let's start. By simply saying a simple thing, this ain't grandpa's market. This is a tough market. We are nailing multiple huge trades. I'm looking at my other screens here, and I'm looking at SPY October 31st, 271 calls that were left over from last week, up 225%, up 36 cents off the 20, uh, 20 some or 18 cent range. Lottos, real lottos. Looking at the October 31st, 20, uh, 266 and a half spy calls up 131%. 269 and a half calls up 181%. SPX, 2700 calls, which I tell people to buy, up 165%. Qs, which the world said, oh, it's all over for the techs. The 160, uh, the the 176 calls, and we're far from that, by the way. We are at 166.30 on the Qs. QQQ was up 56 percent, and even the 172, which is way out there on the QQQs, up 34 cents, which translates into 25 percent on the money. Just to give you a little flavor, not to mention Boeing which we nailed right at the bottom yesterday, down huge, panic, up $15. The people who played common made $15 off that, off the close. And the calls up about, about 150% from the time that we mentioned it, or more. And these were the November 2nd, November 2nd, 345 strikes on Boeing. Not to mention Apple, which were up at about anywhere from 40 to 60 percent on the weekly calls. Facebook, that is up nine dollars right now, from a low of five dollars and seventy cents today on the 145 Facebook calls to nine dollars right now roughly not to mention where they're going to be tomorrow on the cheaper ones that we bought which were up nicely which were the 157 and a half call remember one thing about closely trading we don't always go through every single option straight but once in a while i do need to remind people what the heck that happens when we trade charts when we trade charts Okay, so I'm going to keep on doing that because it's high time I started to 
push on my strengths of what I do instead of always coddling the failures of what the markets do on certain days. It's time to rejoice in your successes instead of always apologizing for the minor volatility that happens along the way. Do I sound like Donald Trump? Yes, I am. I am the Donald Trump of trading, okay? Except there is no fictitious comments, which my good friend Donald makes a lot here and there. Just, just off the cuff, just says something. Everything is documented. Everything is uh, uh, shown on, the, um, on my real-time Twitter feed, on my charts. Question of what you guys are doing. So, we have had multiple, multiple winners. And I just showed you a little sample of that. Alibaba itself, from the lows of $2.40, the 145 calls, closed at 370 That is a good, if you do a quick back of the napkin calculation, you're looking at approximately about a buck 30 or a buck 25. That's 50, 51% on your money. So some really good numbers been recorded across the board. Roku, forget it. Beautiful trade. Target, another great one. And we're being selective here because we're not going out there and buying everything in sight. We're just, you know, there's so many things moving. When the algos move, they just sweep up the choice companies, which are the real companies, not the fake companies. The real companies up there. Amazon, even we scalped those uh, 1630 calls from $2 and change. And they're closing in at four. And these are 1,660 strikes. That's 110 points from here, guys. Think about it. Think about the delta, the gamma, the theta. And I'm no options genius. You guys know that. I mean, when it comes to the engineering of it, I just love driving the options. I love driving nice cars, high-performance cars. I don't want to go under the hood and tweak every little high-end electronics. And uh, there are no carburetors anymore, right? Like fuel injectors and this and that. I just want to drive it. I want to turn the engine on, pedal to the metal, move. So that's what I am as an options trader. Long and short, that's what I want to do. I don't want to go into the mechanics of it and, do all kinds of like, oh, you know, this one has like, you know, time value running out. Come on, give it a break. It's basically straight up binary options. Buy if you think it's going higher. Sell if you think it's going lower or short. And honestly, it works. Or else I wouldn't sound like this. I'd be like, oh, guys, it's been so depressing lately. You never hear that from me. Because even in the most depressed times, got to fight. Got to fight. That's what America's made of, right? I know it. So on that note, um, lots of stuff going on. Heavy volatility. End of the end of the fiscal year for um, for the mutual funds. I mentioned that to you. The eight hundred pound gorilla in the market, and for uh, uh, the hedge fund complex, I believe. I know for the mutual fund complex because where that's where I started my career at Putnam Investments up in Boston. Um, is uh, October 31st. That's tomorrow, Halloween. So lots of jockeying back and forth, but we go by the charts. What are they trying to tell us? They don't give us clear signals anymore. And this is a very important part that all of you guys need to listen to. Technical analysis is all fine and good, but there is no one single indicator, fundamental or technical, that's going to tell you that exactly that is going to happen. This is going to happen at exactly this time. Okay? So there's a lot of mixed signals along the way, especially intraday. You guys know that? We got four 1% moves back and forth on the market today alone. Whoa! That's what I say. Welcome to the new normal, the land of machines. 
the land of the transformers, the land of the algorithmic high frequency trading programs and the black boxes. Super fast computers. No racial connotations, obviously. Okay? So the key is that the charts that I produce show you the way. Because volatility in itself, the word itself means it cannot be controlled. It cannot be quantified. We quantify it through my charts. But it doesn't mean that it's going to exactly be there at that exact 15 minute or one hour range. But we show the roadmaps. Now, many of you, I'm happy to say, are starting to embrace it. And you could start doing that even on smaller accounts by trading off the levels repeatedly or necessarily, not even necessarily trading off the levels, but saying, okay, the long term charts are showing no real breakage. So I'm going to go with it, and we're going to go through the charts tonight, which we always do. And we're going to introduce my old friend, Mr. Kapok, the Kapok Curve. I look at that once in a while during some extreme circumstances, and we are in extreme circumstance. We are at the cusp of making American financial markets great again, or in the cusp of making them terrible again. That's what the cusp we're in right now, the inflection point. On that note, we're going to look at the Kapok curve, which I used to look at years ago. Now, this only is relevant during extreme scenarios. And this is your spy on the daily. The Kapok is going to look very different when you look at the weekly or the monthly. All right, so please follow the tactical charts. Individual alerts are working out great. Do not panic because of the volatility that occurs every 5, 10, 15 minutes. If you are a swing trader, you have a real job, which I highly suggest that you guys keep. If you want to be a professional trader, you have to be a different league mentally. Not financially, mentally. I'll be more than happy to help you transition to that as a professional trader because I run the trading business as a business, not as a gambling casino. So I don't go with the myths of like, ooh, markets are really falling. Let's just short it, you know, boom, boom, boom. Very disciplined. Am I right all the time? Absolutely not. Am I right a lot? Yes, I am. Do we win a lot if we do the right things on a tactical basis? Yes, we do. No question about it. And most importantly, which I have to repeat over and over again to remind myself and to remind all of you, keep your emotions in the dungeon. Your opinions, your thoughts, your feelings, your old-fashioned way of looking at the market mean absolutely nothing. Mix your feeling in, feelings in and your gut feelings, which is an important component of, of, uh, of trading, with um, once you get a handle on the charts. Now, getting a handle on the charts, I know, takes a little bit of time. Some people get it a lot quicker than others. But the more these charts talk to you and the more the ones you're looking at your screen talk to you, the better off you will be. Trust me, what we see in the morning means nothing. What we see midday means nothing. All what we see at the end of the day also means nothing. But when you mix them up together, they mean something. And that's what it's all about. That's really what it's all about. Everyone wants to be a closet, political, macro, global, economist, analyst, Wall Street analyst in their closet. They're like, oh, I know what's going on. Oh, this news is so bad, blah, 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 blah. Nobody knows. I've been doing this for well, 14 years on Wall Street and then being a professional trader for the last seven, eight years. Um, seven years, more like it. Um, 
I'm learning every single day. And I'm a very fast an, uh, analyzer, for a better choice of words, of global macro news and stuff like that. Okay? So everyone wants to be like, oh, the earnings came out. They missed by seven cents. It must be really terrible. Cut that crap out. Like I always say, stop being an analyst. Because if you were that good an analyst, then you'd be working for Goldman Sachs or JP Morgan or for Credit Suisse or Deutsche Bank or someone out there. We're just humble traders. Okay? And at least you're with my service where I can give you the analysis in a much quicker and shorter and most of the times pretty accurate, correct answer to the things that's happening. Once in a while, emotional, retail emotional traders will be correct because it's the herd mentality. But most of the times, you'll be wrong. Most of the times, you will take little uh, uh, um, small profits off the table, leaving the big ones on. We have great traders in our group. A lot of them just scalp little bits, little bits, and they miss out on those big gap opens. 15, 20, 30 point gap opens. Then they say to themselves, oh, well, next time. There is no next time, guys. And I'm not some evangelist, you know. <laughs> I'm not Tony Robbins. There is no next time. It what is in front of you, whether you're swing trading or day trading. Seize the moment. Carpe diem, right? That's it. Seize the moment. Now, saying all that, I do admit it's an extremely volatile, extremely fast market. But let's try to open the book up and take a look at it. So let's just do it right now. We're looking at a five-minute E-mini S&P futures chart. Let me get the right color. Right there you go. Every single point where the market's going to bounce from or sell off is marked. Believe me. Because you are seeing it. Okay? Long time ago, when I had 8,000 followers on stock tweets, I didn't even post there anymore. They even gave me a private chat room, guys, by the way. I need to fill it up when I have time. Okay? Because uh, they have that new thing on stock tweets with the private chat room. And when I first started my service back in April of 2014, I told myself, you know, I just not believing my bullshit because the things work. They still work, except my charting is a far more advanced. So you all need to put in a little bit more concentration to understand it, even though I try to simplify it as much as possible. So here's a Fibonacci chart going back to the 24th of October. The 50% Fibonacci level, retracement level, which the market hit quite a few times, that's in the dotted green line. Guess what? We broke above it at 3.40 p.m. tonight, and this is what it is. It's a very important line. We have taken back 50% of the monumental drop in between all these zigzags. We went and almost touched the 50% and then finally broke out on the third attempt. Remember, third attempts on any particular resistance or support lines means that it's going to basically succumb to it. So it broke out, and this is where we are right now, with features are up two points. On a very simplistic level, today's action in the market, which started actually yesterday, we started actually on Friday, and please read my notes and comments and my charts uh, and my webinars that I did since that time was pretty monumental. Markets are not linear. I know it's very hard to accept it, but markets are not linear. Markets are algorithmic. And what does algorithmic mean? That instead of going here, like right away, in two days, the markets will basically do this detour. And then finally arrive at that point. The markets are going here. I said that to you guys way back. 
we move back, the markets are going to go to 27, 23, 27, 50 when we look at the daily charts in a minute. It's going to go there. How you place your options, whether you buy the coming week, whether you buy two weeks out, is completely up to you. I just suggest a couple of things which will have the biggest bang for your bucks. If the time value is running out, float it out a week. It's not that hard. It's not that hard. Bear with me one sec. Okay, I'm back. So, markets are not linear. They're algorithmic. I was looking for a... Um, my son's in a group. He's in financial engineering. Hardcore stuff. They're doing statistical regression analysis for data mining. I mean, it's good stuff. I do statistics too. Brunch up a couple of numbers, do the average. What are moving averages? They're all statistics. 50-day moving average, 100-day moving average. 10-day moving average, 150-day moving average. They're all moving averages, statistics. Bunch of numbers, add them up, divide them by the number of days, you get an average. Statistical data mining is basically the same thing. So I was talking to um, his, 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 their, their group uh, is actually looking for a specialized tutor. So I called out Splunk, the company, which is one of the best data mining companies out there. We are long Splunk, right? You guys remember that? SPLK. Finest data mining, high, the complete next gen. And I left a message for one of the guys saying, hey, my son's a uh, college in New York City. Uh, he's a junior and uh, their financial engineering group needs a regression analysis or code programming tutor. Try to get a call back. Also let them know that I'm Mong Spunk. Spunk, S-P-L-K. So the point is that this is not regression analysis. This is what I try to do with the charts is remove all the numbers and just simply look at the visual picture. So talking about algorithmic stuff, that's why I mentioned regression analysis, okay, uh, is um, we, we, it doesn't go like this, but it does land up at those zones. On the way, it does this. And that's what what we say in New York, excuse my friends, fucks all traders up, especially retail emotional traders who are just simply following prices because this zigzag, they're like, oh my God, it's all over. It's over. It's over. Oh, it's over. They're not looking at the structure. They're not looking at the support lines. They're not looking at the resistance lines. They're not focusing on the Fibonacci 50% retracement. They're not looking at the big downtrend line here. They're not looking at the stochastics. And this is a five-minute chart. There's a lot of noise on it, right? We know that. So they're doing all the stupid things. There are traders in our group who I respect very much who are catching a few trades here and there, completely missing up on two, three, four hundred percent long side gains because the market from this point in between back and forth, I said this a couple of days ago, is going higher. Now some stupid guy on stock tweets or other forums says, oh, we're going to the moon. No, we're not going to the moon. When we look at the daily charts, we know exactly where we're going to and where we're going to fall from. Can we have another double dip, triple dip, quadruple dip that takes us way lower? Sure, anything can happen. But since the fact we had a huge breaking news this evening, which you guys must have read, that our esteemed Kanye West now is no longer going to spread messages he doesn't believe in, I believe that's a very positive contrarian buy signal for the market. Like I always tell my wife and my son, money does not build character. It gives you all the material wealth in your life that you need. The Lamborghinis, the Ferraris, the BMWs, the Bugattis, the whole works. But you need to have some character. You have to have some knowledge. So this gentleman by saying that he's no longer going to spread whatever he's saying, messages he doesn't believe in. Okay, great. I say buy the friggin' market. All right. So all kidding aside, um, accept the fact that you're going to have volatility along the way. 
And the closer you zoom into it, the more you're going to jump like a monkey on crack, MOC, or MOHTR, monkey on a hot tin roof. But at least it gives you an idea where my charts, how I'm putting it through. Remember, I don't construct these charts for the webinar. I do it well before the market, adjust it during the market, um, and then leave it there. You guys know where you can fall to or where you need to buy. Arrows are there. Uh, entries and exits are very clearly marked, and that's how you have to manage your trades, if particularly you're playing the SPY, the SPX, uh, and such. Next chart. We have an hourly chart, uh, 15 minute. That was a five minute. So the 15 minute is more defined. I have added, uh, thanks to um, a suggestion from our good loyal member, uh, Bob, uh, that uh, the, the uh, VWAP, and also MB had mentioned that. And, um, and the VWAP is uh, very clean to see, very, you know, uh, evaluated average price. Look up the exact definition of Investopedia. So the VWAP is also something that you need to look at. And it just gives you a directional kind of bias. So far, so good. The hourly charts are pretty clean. And you can see less number of candles going up back and forth because of five minutes. This is the 15 minutes. So there are three less candles on this chart versus the five minute, right? Simple math. So we are looking at something like this. This I said on my video was an extremely powerful indicator. This massive engulfing green bullish candle told us that the big short cover guys covered here in a big way at approximately 259.91 or 260 on the spies. This is big. Short term tradable bottom. That's what we call it in the business which means we could possibly rise to about 272 and on an overshoot to 275. You need to sell, sell, sell at each of these levels as long as you bought here, as long as you bought here. And we did great. The spy lotters were up 225%. The 271s were not even at 271. They went from a low. If somebody says, oh, I don't really have any money to play with. Okay, understood. In that case, why couldn't you buy something at 16, 17 cents yesterday and sell it at 55 cents today, which would have generated you approximately 240% on your net money? Think about that for a minute. Okay? We're not even at 271. People are fixated with the fact, and even though I'm not an option geek, I trade options all the time, so I understand the character of it. So I'm not going to be making money till it goes to 271. Bullshit. You could have bought them at 263 when the spy was at 263 when you could have paid about 16 cents at the close yesterday and you can sold them at 55 cents. 16 cents to 55 cents. Your net gain would have been 240%. You don't need to get into the money. You just need to see the velocity of the move to make the 240% of that. But you can buy a lot of calls at 16, 17, 20 cents. So nothing magical about this, just telling you, okay? So, bear with me one second. Next chart. This is very clearly defined. We have the MACD moving up nicely. We have the stoves moving up nicely. Um, first level of major resistance will be here, which we'll probably get there. Um, you know, who might? Who knows? We might get there at the open. Futures are up six, which brings me to the next point. With today's action in the market and yesterday's massive action in the market, the reversal, which I pointed out very clearly, you will have a glo positive global reaction across the board. Chinese markets were up last night. China is putting a lot of stimulus in their markets. I believe the companies are going to be well served by the government intervention of big stimulus, which happens all the time in every large economy. And I believe some of the tensions between good old uh, Donald and Premier Xi of China are going to be somewhat reduced when they give a panda hug on November 20th at the G20 meeting. Hopefully they give a panda hug. Last thing you want to see is Donald flipping a, you know, a birdie to G and G is going to put some sort of big karate move 
uh, and, uh, and, and, and and throw Donald down on the floor. You don't want that to happen, right? And that gives we short the market for down 1,000 points. I think they're going to be civil. I believe that uh, President Trump is uh, on a high level, high stakes poker game, which sometimes I agree with, sometimes I don't, uh, with China. Uh, and I don't think he's ready to collapse the market completely uh, pre midterm, only a couple of days away. And forget what happens in the midterm, I don't really care. Um, even though there's going to be short term reaction. But for his presidency going forward, you don't want the market down another two, three hundred thousand points. Two, three hundred, three thousand points, do you? I know we don't, even though we're going to short the crap out of it. But for the political survival of um, President Trump and the Republican Party, you do not want the market to crash like that. Period. So we have some room to move. We could even move up to 281. But markets are not linear. They go like this, but they get to where they're supposed to go only if you trade and focus on the Crusade trading tactical charts. Not a marketing pitch, a fact. Next chart. We're moving out of that slow zone. This is a beautiful trading chart, absolutely beautiful. I said that end of last week. I said that at the beginning of this week, trade this all week long. Trade all week long. Congestion, very tricky to determine. But we look at many different indicators. I look at the VIX all the time. I let you guys know as long as the levels are not breaking, the big arrows are intact, you gotta buy it. And then you get this big fat move that's up, that gives you another 50, 60, 70, 80% within an hour. You don't need to listen to the news. You don't listen, don't have to listen to your little voices in your brain. Don't have to listen to your wife, husband, boyfriend, girlfriend screaming at you. Just do your thing. Stay focused, guys. Stay focused. Okay? The world will always tell you to lose money. Stay disciplined. As a tactical trader, you will make money. But the world will always tell you. Your family, your colleagues who have no clue. The voices in your head will always say, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. And that don't do it is what loses you money. It's not always what you lose on a bad sell, an emotional sell. But it's what you don't make on the upside. That's a loss. What you didn't make today, which is good for possibly 80% in about two hours on the big move up is what you lost. You have to think like that. As a trader, you have to think like that. It's the same thing in life. Our lost opportunity, the opportunity cost, the lost opportunities in our life are things which you could have done great on. That little shack you could have bought at 30,000 bucks and now you can sell it at 300,000. Happens all the time in my area. I'm not a great real estate guy. My wife still reminds me sometimes, man, we should have bought this and that. Imagine, went from 100,000 to 2 million. Happens a lot in New York, New Jersey. No longer, I believe the housing market has peaked. That's why you saw home sales down. Doesn't mean that it's gonna be in every corner. It's the high-end home prices that are gonna be pushed back down. Because they were going ridiculous. Home prices down. Welcome to the stock market where you can make real money. So this is a great trading chart. And uh, you can see exactly the levels that we're going. We're going to get there. Again, I repeat, in order to get there, you have to deal with the intraday volatility, but stay focused, guys. We're going to be zooming out to the daily in a minute. This is the way the market works. So every little peep, like they say, the lion doesn't listen to the sheep. Doesn't mean the lion is always right. But he is obviously right most of the time. That's why he's a freaking lion. Okay? And the sheep 
grazes and then gets chopped up for some nice, beautiful Shetland wool sweaters, right? So I don't always focus on like what somebody's telling me, like, oh my God, like, you know, this is, uh, this is it. If this doesn't hold, it's going to go there. Well, I don't give a flying crap because I'm following my charts. And I'm not dogmatically bearish. I'm tactically bearish with a very, very open eye to the upside, to the limited upside we're going to. Because if you keep on focusing on the little nuances of this, and you made yourself maybe like 10% on a little move or 20%, would be exciting. What well, should I give you, a gold medal? No. I give a gold medal to the traders, and we have a lot of them who are trading nicely and trading these big 100, 200% moves. I'm not going to put my hats off and give them a gold medal for somebody who makes 10 to 15% during the day and then tells me, oh, if this doesn't hold, we're going to go all the way down. Thank you very much. Thank you. No, I say really thank you for giving me all that garbage information. It's fine. I want to see maximum amount of bearishness in the chat room, which reminds me, nobody's ever in the chat room anymore, which is exciting to me. That is behavioral game theory, like I put out there. We have zero participation in the website chat room, means you have further potential for an upside move. That means, in simple terms, there is despair, apathy, SOA, sitting on you know what, complete, perfect. Perfect. Because you want you get the chat room really excited, that means they're all getting frothy. A empty silent chat room with maybe one or two people you know meandering around, not you know, you hear like all kinds of like bearish talk and it's fantastic. It's a perfect behavioral indicator for limited potential reflex bounce upside that I'm showing it to you guys every day including a 450 ending 431 point Dow Jones industrial move and massive 60, 80, 100, 200, 300% moves on real stocks, options. I've been doing this for a long time, guys. I know. There is no excitement. I love it. I feel like crap when I see the markets open down like 40, 50 points. I get excited the minute I sit at my desk. But neither am I very heavily long. I'm trading with moderate trading sizes. And I'm doing fine. Making money. Almost every day. Next chart. The daily. So this is what we need to focus on if you don't want to deal with the daily crap of what's going on. We're going higher. We're going to go zing back and stuff and listen to the five-minute trader telling me, oh, I just went from, you know, this and this, you know. Oh, okay, great. All this can happen. All I know is this. We have a double bottom, full stochastics, very much in action. Every time you get a double bottom, we actually haven't seen a, conf a, a, a confirmed double bottom, W formation in a while. Not even in February. Not even in, uh, in, in uh, March. Well, we kind of got one. This is good. I'm constantly showing on my charts the positive divergences. I'm sure all of you guys speak English, which should be mandatory for anybody who lives here. Uh, so um, I put out the positive divergences. I showed them repeatedly on my charts. Please take a look at them. It's going to make you more money. Um, Kopak curve. So here is Mr. Kopak with his curve. When the Kappa curve is turning, when the Kappa curve is turning, when the Kappa curve is turning, slowly but surely, this is not your wild frat party sorority girl or guy, okay? Frat guy. This is serious business. When the Kappa is turning, the market overall directional move is going to go higher. Can the Kappa uh, uh, curve kind of like uh, meander around here and screw everybody up a little bit? Sure. Doesn't matter. As long as it's turning. Okay? As long as it's curving. 
you want to buy tactical dips. Short intraday. My arrows are there. If it breaks here, you're going to mean if it breaks here, you short a little bit. Sure, do that. Don't get dogmatically bearish, guys. I've been trading actively. I always traded since 1996, 1997. Never really learned the realities of trading or technical trading. Till early 2000s. And applied it diligently by 2008, 9. I was on the money management side. Remember that. I wasn't a professional, you know, proprietary desk trader, prop trader, or anything like that. Or on Wall Street. One thing I do know, I read traders and people like a book. Like an open book. And I love you all. But trust me. I read you guys like a book. I don't need the chat room to tell me when you're scared or not uh, scared. All I know is when the car park curve is starting to turn, you want to be net-net long. So if you want to not worry about day-to-day -day fluctuations, buy a call out to January. I don't care. You don't want to go beyond January because January you generally have that uh, uh, first two weeks of heavy selling. But you can do that. Every level is marked. There's nothing to say. This was a very wide megaphone. This is where your major support is, 2600. A complete break would be 2526. It certainly can happen. If it's not a panda hug on no, uh, November 20th from Donald and President Xi. If they, and President Xi basically does a very fancy Confucian karate move and throws Donald down flat on the floor because Donald's really not a fighter. We're New Yorkers, we know that. I don't think he's ever thrown a punch at anybody other than a verbal punch. He's a softy. So if President Xi just puts him down or he meets Putin and Putin just does it, one of those like Russian kamikaze jabs at him. Uh, but this is more important about China. Trust me, we're going to take 2,500 out and go below. China, very important. Jerome Powell, not that important. Inflation numbers are moderating. I explained that clearly in my, on my videos. The PCA deflator, the inflation gate, is moderating. He might raise rates in December and just simply put out a very dovish statement going forward. Or he might not raise rates in December. Whichever the case, the markets know it. Look at the 10-year bond. Is it shooting higher to 4%? No. So all this talk from newbies who don't quite understand Fed speak, like, oh, the Fed's really a big problem. No, they're not. He did what was necessary to do. We have inflationary pressures abating. Oil prices are abating. Global growth is starting to slow. So the most important thing right now is the tariff issue. And we're watching the inflation figures. End of story. So, looking at the uh, uh, longer term picture, this is good. If it's going to get overbought, by the time we get overbought, we're going to be in this zone here, 2745 to 2790. You want to be sell, 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 sell. Every one of these levels it hits, the market's going to pull back. So, if we move from here to another 50 points, that's another 300 points on the Dow. Sell, sell. Wait for the pullback, little pullback inevitably and then buy do i think we're going to go all the way to 2900 i don't unless there is a major de-escalation of this trade war that's going on but that's what you're looking at on the long-term chart next chart is your same thing except the spies the kapok is turning mr kapok defer I defer to Mr. Kappa. Okay? Look, look up the definition of the Kappa curve on Investopedia, please. Once you get Kappa turning like this, you don't need to be a freaking one hour trader. You know that the markets are going to make a big move. We're not there yet, but it's starting to turn. There's a lot of technical damage that happened in the market. I've explained that very clearly. 
not just technical damage, there is emotional damage. Even between very sharp traders in our group who are emotionally damaged, they're like totally all of a sudden dogmatically bearish at these levels. Okay, fine. All I got to do is help. Hey, look, I got hit too, but I make money back. And I've shown that to you guys every day. And the big moves can make you back a lot of money. Can I mention one name? Tesla? Boeing? Just in one day? Seriously. Risk equals reward. This market demands aggressiveness and risk. Do it with moderate to small amounts of money. They get bigger. Sit around and do nothing. Twiddle your fingers like, oh my God, listen to Kanye West and... and uh, and, uh, and and all the fake news out there, which which in my opinion is all media channel, to be honest with you. Okay, um, fine. You're gonna make no money. I don't know what perfect moment you guys are waiting for because I keep on showing them almost every other day. So if this crosses over, and there's the lovely number eight, right? The famous number eight. Then you know it. Boom, boom, boom. But I buy the crossover as I see it, not as it's crossing over. Because by the time it gets up here, it could be just a matter of days. Matter of days, guys. Right? That's how it happened. The speed and ferocity of these Algo HFT programs is just mind boggling. I mean, I can't even react to it that fast. This is good. This is very good. And let's go back down here. We went positive for the year. Should said that to you guys before. This was 2018. So we went positive for the year. There's a bullish engulfing candle. Next move is around 270 before the next sell program comes in. Remember, there's a big downtrend line here. Right there. This should actually be in blood red. I'm going to make it thicker. Right there. There's a big fat downtrend line. And that is around 270. Breaks above that, the next level is where we broke down from. Right there. On the 24th of August. Which was 273.38. That's the max move that I can see between now and... What do I know? But just my estimation. Between now and um, next week. Hold on. Can you guys hear me? Yep, we still got you. Okay, good. I had Spotify come up for no reason, so I wasn't sure what was going on. Okay, um, so that's it. So this is very big. Um, this is your big um, level, the 270 level. And of course, we know simple standard uh, stuff. You know, if we break, uh, break, we break above uh, the downtrend line, uh, we're gonna hit these levels. Oops. This is the most important level, 274. If we break above that, we're looking at 280. Downside, we already know what the downside is. If the hell, all the hell uh, breaks loose, then the next level is gonna be 259. But so far, all systems are a go. So for non-active day trading traders, keep on following the daily charts because that's going to give you the picture. Next chart. Same thing. Oh, this is Roku. Read an article late last night. JP Morgan have, has taken a more than a 5% stake in it. I don't think JP Morgan is in the business of losing money, are they? I don't think so. 5.5% in a company is not a joke. Billions of dollars. And uh, sorry about that. And uh, this is where we are. I like it. I love buying distressed prices. To me, this is distressed price as long as it is. Because I'm not just a price watcher. I'm a chart watcher. Because remember, we were trading Roku all the way, not from 25, from the 30 level. And the stock went to 80. And we played it all the way staggered up. So now it's staggered down. 
gap fill. Can it slip and slide to 44 for some weird, uh, like awful news? Sure it can, but that's a low probability trade. I believe that the stock turns from here. I'm not even asking for the moon. I am simply asking for 59. Your calls are going to be up 400% on that move, if not more. As long as you buy time, which is November 16th for now. I showed the chart. I, I, I put out the alert today, and they were up very nicely. Actually, not very nicely, but more like around like uh, my average cost is around five. So they were up about eight percent. Just starting. I like this. I even have the Kapok on here. Hmm. They're on all my charts now. Great. Um, so on that, again, same story. It's starting to turn. It is starting to turn. Do I give it, even give a hood about like complete any uh, crap about Roku? No. I don't think I've ever used a Roku device. I'm just looking at the charts. Plus institutional endorsement on the company. Guys, there are many ways to skin a cat, okay? Stop always looking at the broader picture in the market. VIX, very important. VIX has multiple long tail reversals generally connotates that it's going lower. What's low on the VIX? Not here. There's still a lot of risk in the market. Here, 20, 19.99. I'll take that. 22, I'll take that. Can the VIX all of a sudden turn around and just go back hit again? This line, it did that. Sure it can. What I am focusing on, which is giving me a sense, this is what I try to teach all of you, this is worth thousands of dollars in your pocket if you guys only listen. And this is a free webinar. Is look at the internals. What are they telling us? It's a negative divergence. VIX was moving higher, yet the stoves were moving lower. There's no rocket science to it. Even Kanye would understand that. Is it a guarantee it's going to go here? No. There's always risk in the market in a big way. Short term, that's what it looks like. That's why a big arrow here, VIX, uh, the stoves go to about 32. VIX comes down to about 23. There's going to be a little bit of fascination. They're trying to move higher. Remember, there's a lot of short funds still trying to scramble. But in my opinion, VIX is coming down to 20. And that is something you have to watch very carefully, including my Algo VIX chart that I post on a repeated basis almost every two hours on the real-time feed. Apple, Apple's Apple. Trade the ranges. What's the rocket science behind it? We bought it down here. We sold it here at the open. It was beautiful. 40, 50, 60%, nothing like 300%, but hey, great. More than that if you bought it down here. Just trade the charts, guys. I'm going to keep on saying it till it gets through your all of your freaking heads. Mental calibration, mental colonoscopy, right? Go to the doctor, clean your brain out, flush it out. It's going to be painful, but pain leads to pleasure. Flush out the garbage in your head. Stop just watching prices. Trade the charts. I tell myself that, I scream at myself on that, and I'll scream at all of you people because I like you people. Okay, big hammer reversal. This is where we are. Probably goes up higher or maybe zigzags around. Apple calls are cheap. Play it as what it's worth. Apple moves up towards these levels again. The market's going to be up another 600 points. This is your major, major resistance sell zone. This is your major buy zone. Do not get sheepishly dogmatic. Next chart, Netflix. What's the big deal? Trade the ranges. Don't listen to some idiotic analyst who was wrong on every single call on Netflix. I believe Netflix is a freaking thousand dollar company in a couple of years' time. Their market thing is huge. Now, the dogmatic uh, traders in our group and members will give me a fundamental basis, how much debt they carry, blah, 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 blah. I only say one thing. 
been in um, Wall Street since 1996, 1997. I've heard the same old story over again about the fundamental thesis why Amazon will go to zero, why Tesla would go to zero, why all these first movers on, on, in the world, great, phenomenal, life-changing companies would all go to zero because they had huge cash burns, uh, they had debt loads, blah, 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 blah. America was built on debt. Are we debt? The whole American economy is based on credit. A 20-year-old can buy a house as long as he has a good income, puts down 20%, gets a mortgage for 400000 300000 can buy a house. In Japan, you have to be 50, 60 years old to actually buy a house. So what's all this debt crap all the time? As long as you can service the debt. Yes, I don't like the, 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 the U.S. deficit, overall budget deficit. It's huge. Those things have to be controlled. But in general, this whole fundamental, it is really fundamentalist, like almost like an Islamic fundamentalist or Christian fundamentalist or Buddhist fundamentalist or whatever, or Nazi fundamentalist uh, talk. But, like, oh, you just have to be that way or you're all bad. Garbage. As long as you can service your debt. I, I totally agree with President Trump. As long as we get our economy to grow, we can service our debt. That's why we don't want our rates to go in hogwash. And it won't go hogwash. That's supply side economics, free market capitalism. So Netflix is completely go out of business because they're taking on so much debt. Well, friggin', what about their growth rate? What about the addressable market that they're they, they are addressing? Remember what they said. For the believers, what's that, what's that old saying? For those who believe, no proof is needed. For those who don't, they'll just never believe. And if we all had these skeptics and bears, the United States of America, tall that we stand, economically, we would never have happened. Because they always say, oh, you can't take on debt. Nah, as if a completely balanced budget and no deficit would really make a country grow. Hogwash. Okay? Just my two cents. All right, next topic. What do we have here? Facebook. Where is Facebook right now? Uh, it's at 150. It's right here, just the way I showed you guys. And this is one of the simple charts I'm showing you. It's right here right now. What more can I say? You buy here, you sell here, and then you see what happens, whether it goes higher or whether it pulls back. This is where we are on Facebook after hours, exactly like this channel showed. Trade the ranges. And if you want to be another analyst on Facebook, good luck. Guys, straight talk, okay? Kopak, Mr. Kopak is saying, okay, you can buy me. Which means it's not going to the moon, but a good shot to go to 160. Lots of money on the options, guys. Listen, I know you found this entertaining. Hopefully this entertainment puts money in your pocket. Just trying to teach people what I think works and not just I think. Because remember what Clueless State Trading is all about. It's reality trading. I'm not sitting here saying, oh, I'm not going to trade. I'm just going to keep on feeding garbage to my members like most other services do. I'm trading on my own. I'm taking my hits. I'm making my money. I want you guys to do the same thing. Have a great evening. DC, Mike, two of my good friends. Enjoy. Make some money. And uh, any questions you guys have, come in the chat room. DM me on Twitter. Hope everyone else who listened to this finds this helpful. This is a tough market. Markets are always going to be tough. It's tougher than usual. But in between, you get the biggest bang for your buck. That's all you have to remember. Stop listening to the naysayers and the 10% ROI type of traders. Go for the 50, 60, 100, 100, and 200% type of movers. Okay? In the meantime, short as much as you want. Just use my chart, keep the shorts close to your vest, and don't forget, 
that the breaking news upon Kanye West, who says he's been used and he'll focus on art from now on, is a major bullish technical signal. God bless you all. See you guys tomorrow.